And this was a really fucking bad time for me to work because I had like a really, really bad fucking ankles at that time, especially coming off working the entire spring. So, yeah. you know, at around uh, 9 o'clock or so, I got my break for an hour. So, you know, that was cool, all that shit. And then, uh, you know, the story closes at the inside part of the dining room closes at 10. So we have one girl go out there and clean up all the shit out there. And the drive through doesn't close until uh, midnight. And, of course, uh, this being the summer at all, uh, and, you know, the theaters, theater was, like, uh, right across the parking lot. It was, like, a, it's kind of like mini mall kind of thing. And, of course, the theater let out at, like, uh, midnight or something. So we got hit fucking hard. We were supposed to close at midnight. We stayed open until uh, about 1, dealing with all the cars coming through. Uh, and we had very little supplies since, you know, it's fucking night. We're not supposed to... We're, like, close to closing. We're not supposed to have all that much shit on. So, of course, we got burned, and that added more time to it. You know, like, chicken strips. They take four and a half minutes to cook. And usually by that time, like, you've already done, like, some pre clothes and stuff. Yeah, we've done, we like... shut down, like, half the grill and cover it up and all that. Actually, the grill was different. It, it, I think it was, like, kind of... If it wasn't clean spotless, it was getting close to that, you know, for the night clothes and all that. And, of course, it got fucking filthy again. Uh, we shut down half of the sandwich-making station. So instead of, you know, having being able to go across, it was kind of, like, set up so that two people could work at the station, both of them stocked with the same supplies, and they share a thing of lettuce. So, of course, uh, we shut down half of it, and... The, and that half had nothing up top. So, of course, we ran out of, like, pickles and onions and tomatoes and lots of lettuce. So, of course, we had to go all the way to the back and get more of that shit. Uh, the fry station was nearly cleaned, and they got fucking filthy again. The floors were wet because they were being mopped. And a lot of shit went on the ground because it was hectic. And of course, Chilly. after that, Chilly. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> after that, after I'm, that, all things on the ground. Chili meat. <laughs> Actually, we. Well, yeah. Uh, I worked at a Wendy's like that. Yeah. <laughs> that you, like, I take it you don't recommend frequenting that Wendy's. <laughs> well, I don't know. We uh, that that was first time I, I worked at Wendy's like three times, but that's that's for another that's a, for another job podcast. Oh, yeah, I think you told me about that, like, a long-ass time ago. You know, I, I don't consider that a horrible job, and there was really not, not that ever, like, horrible things. Like, any time that, that the manager, like, like I dropped a burger on the ground, they was like, chili meat, I threw it away. I <laughs> never, ever put anything that I dropped on the floor anywhere else except for the garbage. Goddamn and right. Just right. completely against that. Oh, some people I don't. do that to another person, ever. I've never... I mean, I've never spit in anything or, you know, never substitute uh, sour cream for, you know, another bodily function. Nothing like that. <laughs> Mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, here's a nasty <laughs> true story real quick. I think a restaurant here where I lived at a long time ago, two guys ejaculated in some woman's soup. And yeah. uh, she ate it, and I think she got had herpes in her throat or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I, I'm not trying to be funny to make a joke. I'm, that, that's I know it's just it, that's like an uncomfortable laugh. Yeah, it's like oh you oh, I mean, oh yeah. And then, so it, it makes you like you said, J Man. On time ago, you told me when you go to a restaurant, you you're trusting that restaurant to be clean enough and safe to eat. Big time. And you're taking a risk. Is what you're doing really? Yeah, because you yeah you never know. I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of places. You don't really get to see what's going on in the kitchen. They have it covered up. So you, I mean, you're laying your entire trust there. You know? uh, so anyway, uh, you know, we finally got closed at one, and you know, the the manager does the tills after that, does whatever the hell they do with that, and the rest of us were stuck cleaning all the shit. And of course, it was just me, my brother, and my mom, and the manager. And that was fucking horrible because my mom is kind of like. Uh, anal when it comes to cleaning shit so she's like getting everything even things that don't require cleaning at that time and 
well, with all things being said and done, we got out of there at four in the morning. Yeah. Wow. Actually, it was it was uh, early enough or late enough, whichever way you want to look at it. We could actually watch the sunrise together. <laughs> it was really? mad fun. Not ECW. No. And there was another time when I was working at a subway where, uh, well, it wasn't like an isolated incident. It just happened all the fucking time. The manager, or, well, not the managers, the owners were fucking camera watchers. So anytime uh, they see, see you just like uh, slacking off for even a, a minute or two, they'd give the store a call and tell you to get back to work or something like that. And of course, the owners had to be uh, Indian or something, something like that, you know, like from India, not native or something. So, of course, I could barely fucking understand them. And I'm the kind of person who would rather blindly, uh, you know, think this is what they're saying than having to ask them to repeat themselves so many times. So, you know, anytime there was a dirty table, within like a minute, he'd call us up and be like, clean that fucking table. Anytime we'd, uh, you know, be working on the floors and scrubbing the floors and, you know, taking our... You know, trying to set all the tables back down and all that. You missed the spot. No, he'd call us and tell us uh, what's with all the the tables being up. Wait, wait. Well, so, the uh, were there the any tables. managers in the store? Actually, that's those are like there are very few things I liked about Subway, and the thing I liked about it is one, the managers that I worked with were for the most part very quite lenient, and two. They were hardly ever fucking around. <laughs> like this now, one I understand time. it's their business. That that's their business that they run, you know, the store, but or they that they own. But come on, you gotta really have no life to sit there looking through a webcam or whatever the whole time, uh, watching from from their uh, you know, from their home or wherever they're at, corporate I office. I think it was probably like through a cell phone or something like that. And to look at that and and to call for every little tiny, little. Uh, detail something that goes wrong. It's like that's what they're paying the managers to do. And if the managers are that horrible, then they need to be fired and replaced. The owners shouldn't have to call up there every 15 minutes to tell you of a minor detail. That's that's just almost as dumb as the thirty dollars and change guy. Agreed. Agreed. That's, that's, that's the, th- about, the thing is the thing about Subway uh, real quick um, is that it's complete franchise. As far as I know, you know, I, I might be wrong about this, and somebody could bring information and prove me wrong. But um, every subway is—I um, can't say privately owned, but it's 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 completely franchised. Like there's, you know, like Pizza Hut. There's there's a lot of uh, Pizza Hut Incorporated, you know, and there's right. and then there's franchises beyond that. But um, you know, and, and and that could be a, a good experience or a bad experience on on Bear's you know side of that. It was a bad experience. Um, if we ever have a good uh, job podcast, um, it's I will be very brief. <laughs> well, I I, I worked at a, a subway for like three months and it was awesome. But I just I got lucky. I got really lucky and I worked for um, a really good store, and it and it was great. Um, and, and I'll explain that later, but I mean, you know, it, it goes, it, you know, it goes from franchise to franchise. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I want to add that in there. Don't hate Subway. <laughs> I love I Subway. I hate Subway. I hate the owners. <laughs> Eat. I need I need to go on the Subway diet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Jared. I need to. Uh, not that I'm like obese or anything but i mean like i'm trying to now that i'm 30 years old and i guess I, it just hit me like you need to start eating healthier uh, and so i'll uh, die so, yeah yeah and uh well, you, know, I, you, I, I, anyway. you know i haven't really been trying to eat healthy or trying to but i'm failing at it uh actually this week i had like salad two or three times this week at chili's uh that's probably more salad than i ever had in my life <laughs> Um, there you go. You can eat healthy, and you don't have to step Pizza Hut anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I try, I've cut back from pizza and trying to come back from uh, any meat, burgers, whatever. Uh, I've been eating salads and and uh, Subway lately, and uh, 
You know, the only time I'll splurge and have anything unhealthy is when I go out to eat on a special occasion, yeah. uh, like birthday or uh, um, get together with someone I haven't seen in a while or whatever. But most of the time, I'm trying to eat healthy and have Subway. I need a, I don't know how the Subway diet works or whatever Jerry does. And you can't have sub- anything good on a turkey breast yeah. and, like, lettuce, tomato, right. no sauce. <laughs> it's like either turkey or chicken. That's it. No bacon, no cheese. Yeah, I don't care for bacon and cheese anyway, so that's good. I like tomatoes. You are so tomatoes. un-American. How dare you? No. <laughs> I, you I love bacon. I love bacon. <laughs> I love bacon, but I mean, I, for a Subway sandwich, no. I mean, oh, of course not, here. because it's gonna—they're not gonna put very much on it. <sighs> uh, Bro, that kid, I guess that that kid's mom, whatever, years ago, tried to sue McDonald's because their her son got fat from eating at McDonald's every day. <laughs> yeah, what'd you expect? <laughs> it's like uh, there's, it's, there's such things as restraint, <laughs> right? I mean, self-control. I mean, I know some people really have. Eating, I don't know, eating disorders, or they they really have an addiction to food or whatever. I know it's hard for them, but but when you're you're the parent taking your your kid to McDonald's every day, all of a sudden you notice that they're fat. It's like, what did you expect? Yeah. I mean, and if whose they, fault is that? You McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, go to uh, I go to I don't know what they have to food food rehab or whatever it is to help the kid, you know, stop eating the eating disorder or whatever addiction to food. I mean. It, it, it just so, it sounded so stupid. And by the way, please don't tell me that McDonald's lost a lawsuit in that. It's thrown out of court. Oh, good. Thank God. Because, it really, I mean, that, that is like one of the dumbest lawsuits. That, that's if, if, if they, like, you know, actually voted or uh, ruled in favor of the, the, the mother with the obese kid, then that just opens up the fucking door for everybody. Every remotely fat person to sue McDonald's. Right, right, I, right. You know, I, I think that that the whole lawsuit thing that you know that was actually credible ended with the uh, the the Super Size Me documentary. Where yeah. The guy went on the you know the the what was it? I think it was like thirty days. He went on just a strictly McDonald's diet and ordered yeah. everything off of the menu. Right. That lawsuit is, was more <laughs> dumb than the lawsuit in wrestling where this fan tried to sue this wrestler for tearing up his sign. <laughs> a four-year-old got sued uh, recently. Four-year-old? For what? <laughs> four-year-old. For, um, and, and it was explained this way in the story, for running down an uh, 80-some-year-old woman. Running down a four-year-old, <laughs> I swear, it said in, in, in the thing, I just I read this earlier today, Ran down, which is come on, like that. Like a kid is just like got the training wheels on and just I'm gonna run this old lady down. And it was a, it, the, it was a uh, it was somebody on a, on a bicycle, a four year old, I believe it was a girl, um, was was racing another kid. It was I think it was also four years old. Um, they were racing down the sidewalk and ran into uh, you know an over eighty year old lady. And she had serious injuries from it. You know, she was old anyways. Um, and the judge of the, uh, you know, um, ruled that since the kid was closer to the age of five, there was a, there was a case like in the, in the 20s or whatever that, um, that had something like that, but it was under four years of age. They ruled that that was like uh, infancy. But after that, it was like actually being like like you could sue like an adult. You could sue someone older than four years of age. True story. 